Hey guys, I'm producing this series while still holding a full-time day job, and we pay a good bit of money to my video editor to produce each episode. If you would like to help pay for the video editing, please join my Patreon at patreon.com slash intrinsoft. Currently, the video editing budget is the primary bottleneck, keeping us from churning out more videos per month. Any amount of money helps, as we currently earn no money from these videos. Please also follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with new content. So there are three main types of binary files, and they're called executable files, relocatable files, and shared libraries, or DLLs. In the first video, we discussed executable formats, talked about the three main formats widely in use today. If you need to, please refresh your memory by re-watching it. We hinted in that video that there were also different types of binary files that we would touch on in a future video. This is that video. Each of the different executable formats also has several subtypes of binary files that it provides for different purposes. That is, each format, say ELF, provides the three subtypes. PE does the same. It also provides the three subtypes, and MACO also provides those same three subtypes. Do not confuse formats with types of binary files. This is all a bit tough to take in, so let's take each of the binary types one at a time. The first type of binary file is executable binaries. Executable binaries are probably the most commonly seen type of binary file. They are ready to be directly executed by the CPU on demand. You simply double click and the operating system will load them into memory. Read the descriptors inside of the executable file, figure out which shared library code modules it depends on and load them also. And then it will begin executing the program. That's it. Executable binaries are the simplest type of binary file to understand. The second type is shared libraries. Shared libraries are perhaps the second most commonly seen type of binary file, but you usually have to deep dig into your operating system's guts before you encounter them. If you need a refresher on what they are, please rewatch part one of this series entitled Executable Formats. To recap, they are binary files which can be linked to dynamically by executable binaries which indicates a dependency on them. Shared libraries tend to contain code that is used simultaneously by multiple programs, and so it is more space efficient if those snippets of code are separated into modules and linked to by all the programs that need them, rather than having every program duplicate that code. Shared libraries are almost ready to be directly executed immediately by the OS, just like executable binaries, but with one catch. They have to be relocated by the OS for each program that has a dependency on them. Relocation is the process of taking a code module that is floating, for lack of a better term, and anchoring it to a fixed place to enable the running program to use it. See, because shared libraries can be used by multiple programs simultaneously, they cannot be tailored for the memory usage profile of any particular program. They must be able to fit into the execution environment or memory address space of each of those very diverse programs. If you don't know what an address space is as yet, don't worry, we'll cover it in a future video. And you don't need to understand it to benefit from this video, and for now we will refer to address spaces as RAM environments. All you need to remember is that modern OSs deceive each running program into seeing its own separate view of RAM, which we will call its RAM environment in this video. You see, different programs use vastly different amounts of RAM while being executed, and RAM usage fluctuates even within the same running program over time. For example, a web browser like Firefox may fluctuate from using a couple of hundreds of megabytes to using one gigabyte or more as you open and close new tabs. Because of these highly divergent and dynamic RAM usage profiles, shared libraries have no guarantee that they will fit in the same place in each program's RAM environment. One program, call it program A, might have room to fit a physics engine library in the middle of its RAM environment. But another program, call it B, might only be able to squeeze that same physics engine in at the bottom of its RAM environment. Program C might have loaded that same physics engine library very early on in its execution, so it might have found space for it at the top of its execution environment. But remember that the OS wants to avoid having to give each program its own separate copy of the library in RAM, so the OS gets around this by making shared libraries act like wandering or nomadic code with no fixed predetermined location in RAM. The correct technical term for such wandering, floating, nomadic code is position-independent code. 
Each time a running program requests to use that, pati that particular position independent library module as a dependency, the OS will use some magic to relocate the shared library within that program's RAM environment without having to alter the original shared library file in RAM. And this enables the OS to share the library without copying it for each separate RAM environment. That's the gist of relocation as it applies to shared libraries. Relocation is the process where a position independent shared library file is dynamically given a final location within a particular program's RAM environment. Relocatable objects are the third type. Now, third and final major type of binary file is known as a relocatable object file or object file for short. We acknowledge that this is a confusing name to use since shared libraries also get relocated by the OS and therefore the process of relocation is not unique to relocatable object files but unfortunately this is nevertheless the name that was given to this type of binary file. Relocatable objects are also position independent just like shared libraries but the way that they are relocated by the OS is different. Shared libraries are relocated using a special technique that does not alter the original copy. This special technique enables the shared library to be used by multiple programs simultaneously. Relocatable object files, however, are relocated in a faster, more efficient way that modifies the original copy. Modifying the original is less complex than the complex process used to relocate shared libraries, but it obviously means that relocatable objects in RAM can only be used by one program at a time. There are two main ways that relocatable objects are used. First, they are used by compilers as intermediate files when translating source code into binary code. In this use case, relocatable objects are used as temporary placeholders for snippets of code when the compiler is creating an executable binary or shared library file. When they are used this way, they are temporary and they are used and then thrown away when the final file, either an executable binary or shared library, is completed and ready to be executed. Secondly, relocatable objects are used by operating system kernels to package device drivers. Remember that RAM usage varies wildly among different programs. Well, since the OS itself is also a program, albeit a very low-level program, it also has a very wildly variant RAM usage profile, just like a web browser or a game. Modern OSs try to load drivers for hardware only when they need them. They will dynamically relocate the driver and load it into the operating system's RAM environment. Yes, the OS also gives itself its own separate RAM environment, just as it does for every other running program. However, remember that drivers are only used by the OS, and they don't need to be used by other running programs simultaneously in the way that shared libraries do. So since the OS is the only program that uses drivers, it can afford to do away with the complex relocation technique that is used for shared libraries, and use the faster technique used by relocatable object files. And that's the short rundown on the three major types of executable file. The key to understanding the process of relocation is that there are two variants of relocation used by the operating system. The first variant uses some complex magical tables to avoid modifying the original binary file. This variant of the relocation process is used for shared libraries. The OS constructs these magical tables and duplicates the tables into the RAM environments of the running programs that need copies of the library. So that way it doesn't copy the library itself, it copies only these small tables. The complex tables enable the OS to then share the same file among multiple RAM environments without having to modify the original copy. The second variant directly modifies the original copy of the binary file and this variant is used on relocatable object files. Keep in mind that each executable format has its own way of providing these three types of binary files. Executable formats are not to be confused with these different types of binary files. ELF, PE, MACO, and most other formats each have their own way of providing each of these three types of binary files. Please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel as it helps us to move toward monetization. We currently do not earn any money off of these videos. We will also answer as many questions as we can if you leave your comments in the comment section. Thank you.